All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and or good evening, everybody, including people of the internet, and welcome to today, Monday, the 28th of October, our meeting of the IPFS Documentation and Developer UX Working Group. You can follow along in the notes, which I shall share in my screen. Um, which I shall share in my screen now. And um, you can also find the link to this notes document as well as all of the other information on how to get involved with the IPFS documentation and developer UX working group in our repo at github.com slash IPFS slash docs. As always, the purpose of this meeting is to update each other on our progress against our OKRs. And with that in mind, um, we can go ahead and set on in unless anybody has any additional um, any additional comments on top of our usual check-in. Anyone, anyone? I take your silence as a no. All right, cool. Um, Chris, do you wanna keep us up to date on the Docs Vita launch? Sure thing. Uh, I'm just getting my screen in order. Um, so. Good things happen. It is. It's been a good week. Every week's a good week, but this has been uh, exceptionally. Um, I think many pieces came together this week, which was a uh, uh, great alignment. So we we kind of folded the prototype into the the new beta app. So I guess the the first thing to announce is that we we now have a public repo, which I have linked in the notes there. Um, so it's at the top line of the the beta um, occurring. Uh, docs beta launch. So that, that's now the new baseline application that we're using uh, as our primary development. Um, this is now set up for CI. Um, it currently is building against um, uh, just Netlify for the meantime while we're um, working on uh, various staging mechanics and uh, branch testing. Um, and we've basically set up the uh, a baseline theme. So uh, Jessica can probably pop open the URL for that while you're on the screen. Yes. Um, um, where is it? I haven't linked it. Let me just All put right. it in the link. Let's see if I can just um, find it in my... Yeah, it'll be in your history. It'll be IPFS docs. No. Give me time. No. Okay. IPFS dash. Let me just post it in here. Yeah, please do. Let me uh, see I'll... my embarrassing search auto suggest history. Yeah, exactly. We'll see everything you've been <laughs> um, All right. Okay. Fantastic. I'll bring that up in the chat. Uh, so this URL may change. Uh, it's temporary for if anyone's watching. Uh, this is essentially our working pro progress at the moment. Um, we've ported across the navigation from the prototype, and we've had various discussions around how we're going to format this and uh, essentially um, uh, stylize the individual entry points. Um, there's some configuration around different tiers and uh, the individual categories that we've got into that. So uh, we're using this as a sort of work in progress at the moment. Uh, the next stage is essentially to go through our primary uh, milestones, which are for, uh, towards lab week in the next two weeks. Um, uh, and that'll be mainly porting over the content from the existing site to have a fully working prototype, uh, like for like of the existing content that we've got now, ready for when uh, our Supreme Technical Writer is on board at the beginning of November. So uh, we'll have a, a fresh uh, site ready for, for trialing and prototyping with. Um, uh, from there, we are going to continue to extend that um, and uh, essentially write out the, the, all, the, all the pages that are currently, um, we don't have content for, we're going to design um, the stuff that Eric has uh, been working on, which is the essential uh, splash screen for content that doesn't exist yet. So we can start to have a voting mechanic for anything that doesn't exist. Um, and then we can start to get some insight from that. Um, so I guess the next steps are really um, within this week, we'll be migrating the rest of the content across, uh, configuring a few uh, remaining plugins just to make sure that we've got the appropriate embedded code for um, displaying videos and uh, the code view for um, uh, different syntax snippets that we want to integrate. Uh, we also had some discussion last week around how we're going to do the API layout. So essentially we might um, try and uh, present some um, various code examples side by side so we can have different JS and Go uh, implementations on the same screen so you can switch between them. Um, but these, this is to be decided. So we're just going to uh, see what is available to us um, and essentially just get, get the thing working so we can uh, test out all the search in context and enable um, 
uh, the progressive web app offline functionality and do some uh, various testing around that as well. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment. Um, Which is awesome. Um, yeah, we should be well on our way to have something that people can at least play with um, to some degree. Um, at Lab Week, which is wonderful, and and you know beyond that, you know anything beyond that is definitely icing. But we, you know, our intent is to have something up and running by Lab Week, where we can get some good feedback from folks um, internal to PL as we uh, continue working on stuff, which is fantastic. Thank you so much. I should note that there is actually an issue open that we uh, will connect the two uh, yes. sites together at some point. So there, there will be when we're sort of saying this is an official uh, open to the public, uh, then we'll we'll have a, a banner. Uh, across the existing doc docs that will pull you in or invite you to come and join the beta. Um, so while that doesn't exist, it's essentially sneaky previews for everybody and you can play around with what we're building. Um, but welcome any feedback in the meantime. So it's just a case of um, uh, this is our staging uh, product at the moment until we decide that's uh, an official uh, overlap. In other words, if you're one of the people who are so on it in order to drop in and watch this meeting, you get a little bit of a bonus prize. So good <laughs> on you. Um, but yeah, we'll have we'll have bi-directional linking to and from the beta um, just to encourage folks to go back and forth as soon as we're in a little bit more of a solid publicly useful state. Um, Maybe we can reserve sticker, uh, stickers for anyone who comes and gives their feedback for yeah, early. Yeah, <laughs> we'll figure. We'll we I I I we promise some sort of swag. We don't know what that swag is, but we promise swag. So um, so so feel free to uh, make us make it on that promise. Um, carrying forward, uh, the recurring item for the legacy docs deprecation plan. Again, we're just adding notes to issue 308 as we go along of this initial stage of building things. Uh, those notes will eventually be collated into a more formal deprecation plan. So this is just saying that work continues. Um, metrics definition for the beta site. Um, we are holding off on this until we're a little bit further in defining the beta site, but we're getting closer and closer. Um, also. Um, are looking forward to John onboarding uh, next Monday so that we can start talking about um, exactly what sort of metrics and data we want to capture. Um, beta site, is this helpful feedback mechanism? This is, um, this is complete as we discussed last week. The visuals for this are complete under issue 305. And once we're a little bit further in the beta site, um, we can tackle that in issue 306 just as a refresher. Uh, this is the fantastically interesting lovely is this helpful widget oh, wrong one here with a workflow um very similar to what we have on on our existing site but is a, a little bit more detailed um gives the user an open feedback box to input stuff in um i guess my question to you which i think uh, chris you sort of answered was whether this is something that might be worth tackling while we're migrating content but it sounds like you've got really sort of your roadmap sort of sorted out as it is I would say so. We, um, uh, as you've deployed that update to the existing site at the moment, just for the, the issues that I think we'll, we'll see how that goes to start with. If um, yeah, yeah. If we don't, if we don't get any any people dropping any uh, feedback directly to the issue queue, then perhaps we'll look at another more lightweight way of having um, some dynamic feedback. It, it just means that if we have an open ended feedback box uh, that is just um, a form like that that means that we lose the context of the user so we don't have any opportunity to reply to them or follow up um so it could it's a, it's a pros and cons towards the two so um but yeah i think m most effort will go into implementing a new version that will essentially live on alongside the the, the updated documentation um and then we'll work on exercise to backport any of that uh, as necessary and as you as you noted, um, so this is the current site. We did add this information here um, and add this week some better issue templating so that if you open an issue, it actually gives you um, some prompts and questions to ask. And it also gives us the referring page. It labels them accordingly um, so that we can prioritize it in our issue queue as well. So, um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see how that goes response wise. And um, good point. We can, we can go from there. Awesome. Um, usability testing. We have not done any new testing this week, but that's because we've been in, um, actually deploying the test results from the IA testing in Boulder a couple of weeks ago on the beta site, as you just saw. Um, my intent, hopefully today, if I don't have too many meetings, is to actually um, um, I'll open up a, a starter branch for the external links in that now structure so we can at least knock those out. Um, 
meetings permitting. Uh, recurring item, features voting. Um, we do have a public facing voting page for this now, which is great. Um, I am an admin view, so this isn't exactly what the user will see, um, but we do have all of our items that we wanted to get external prioritization on from our features comparison list up in here. Uh, this is ready to launch. We just have to figure out exactly how we want to launch it and socialize it. Um, sounds like our opinion right now is that it should go hand in hand with the docs beta just to give people a context. Um, so this is probably going to be on hold for a couple of weeks, but it is queued up and ready to go. I'll take that task this week just to uh, at least have a, an overview and see how how we what well, may integrate it in some way. Um, that would be that'd be awesome. That's it sounds like you do, yeah, it sounds like you can do like really deep integration with canning. I just didn't really look into it at all. Yeah, but I mean, the simplest way is that we can obviously just have a link that points straight out to it. Then it doesn't feel like it's a part of the site. But then, yeah, we can also uh, use the API to pull uh, individual um, views in as we want to. So um, I'm considering using it as the way of voting for content that's up and coming. Um, yeah. So that so that way we can have we could use a suggest box for so uh, we can have a separate board that is a content suggestion board. And then people can upvote and downvote uh, things on there, or at least comment on it. Um, so that's just a brief idea, but it does look like it's a better way of doing that than using something uh, that's a little bit more abstract, like an analytics program. Yeah, uh, we yeah, can, yeah. We can that's awesome. Back. No, that's super awesome. Um, cool, cool. Um, let me know what you find out, because that's probably stuff that um, I can help out with too. So. Awesome. Recurring item, ecosystem audit. Uh, this is on hold because Eric is slammed because of lab week. So um, continue to watch this space. Eric, you're not dead yet, so this is good. It's a bench spot we hold now. <laughs> you may or may not be dead yet. <laughs> Are you doing that thing where you just like screen? No, you're moving. You didn't just screenshot yourself. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, recurring item, content improvement, user driven or legacy content improvement. That's Epic Strain 3D. This is like directly fixing stuff. Um, you know, admittedly, there's a bit of a blocker right now because um, we're diverting a lot of efforts to migrating the docs to the new platform. Um, but then that said, um, we want to make sure that we address as many sort of small existing contents on the legacy site as we can. Um, just so that we can, you know, we can migrate the cleanest thing possible over and, and stop work on the legacy platform. Uh, that said, I did get to close a couple of things. Uh, there's a few things still in progress. Uh, we have an external uh, a, a, a contributor PR um, that I'm waiting to hear back on um, for like one net new piece of documentation, which is super sweet. Uh, user driven, as far as user driven issues, um, content specific issues that came about as a result due to um, actual user <laughs> feedback. Um, we are, we have one in the icebox, six in our soon queue. Um, the good news at that is that's, that's a pretty small number. Um, three new issues are in review since last week. That includes the contributor um, issue that I just referred to. And um, I was able to close four small issues. Uh, regarding related to a few things like uh, one of them was the better issue templating, for example. Um, as far as legacy issues that we inherited from um, you know, the old doc site and the old website repo, um, yeah, there's still 23 of those in the icebox, 14 of those are in Zoom. Um, that is mainly net new content requests, so um, the, the rate of change on that at the moment is, is not really going to be specifically super, super far. Um, but we did close two since last week and put one in review, which is good. So progress is happening and progress will continue once John joins us next week. Um, that brings us to this guy, recurring item, content close reading. Um, this is John's primary onboarding task. He's already taking a little bit of, of an initial review in the meantime. Um, look forward to chatting with him about the specifics of getting this done when we see him next week. Um, and then finally, Proto School. Jill, take it away. Okay, so we're getting really close to finishing the, the new tutorial. I've been working on uh, refactoring a couple of lessons we, we had structured differently at the start. And now we're mostly working on uh, the feedback for incorrect answers in the exercises. And we still need, uh, we're still waiting for a final name for the API we're teaching. Oh. <laughs> Naming things is hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. We're, we're still waiting on that, so. 
Oh, okay, okay. But that sounds that's awesome. That's, that's super progress. It's, um, it's getting yeah, it's getting close. Nice, nice. Uh, is there anything you need our help with this week? I don't think so. Okay. Not that I think of. Cool, cool. Um, I noticed Molly's on this call. Do you have anything that you want to offer feedback or uh, questions on? Hello. Um, I will. I will make my my video appear. Oh, never mind. That there we go. Good morning. In a, in a very dark room. <laughs> <laughs> the darkness of video. Um, one item that I was curious about um, coming up in this group more was um, things like our discussion forum, and if there are ways that we can be grabbing feedback from sources like that. It's not directly related, but Jessica, as you were doing the phenomenal like. Hey, look, I'm tracking all of these issues and user icebox issues and user feedback issues. I'm curious if people have like content around the discussion forums that we are threading into docs or if we could do metrics. Um, okay. yeah. Next request. Another request is um, I took a look last week at the metrics that we're seeing on our existing documentation site on what things are getting them, you know, all of the metrics work that you guys implemented last quarter what things are getting the most positive feedback and what things are getting more negative feedback. Yeah. Um, super useful and directional. Um, and curious if we could have kind of little readouts on that in this weekly meeting, because I think it's useful direction for us to remind us where we should be focusing. Uh, yes, so regarding regarding the forums, um, you know, I, I certainly, and I know others on the team have been lurking on the forums, um, you know, if for nothing else, you know, getting, getting the daily and weekly um, comment thread recaps. Um, I am keeping, I am monitoring those in case there's something, you know, that, that we want to like actually specifically add to the issue queue. There have been a couple of occasions where I've jumped in and offered some feedback or pointed people at specific things. Uh, the volume hasn't been super high at this point. You know, usually what we've been seeing on, on the forums is like a very specific um, help requests for I'm implementing X in Y way. Um, and that's a little bit out of the scope of the content that we've got right now. Um, but do know that we are keeping an eye on that. Um, yeah, good point about um, let's, as far as this, like, um, we, we haven't, <laughs> we let the super, the super high uh, metrics watching um, slide for a couple of weeks because we were so busy implementing the new beta, but um, let's just make sure that we, um, that we add that to, um, yeah, Chris, how, do, how best do you want to do that? I was actually thinking just last week about trying to find a better way to report on this. Um, and partly because the numbers themselves, actually, then you have to do some mental arithmetic to work out. It's like, oh, seven people said this is positive, but also four people said it was negative. What is your overall sentiment? Uh, so uh, I'm going to look at a better way to present that and do sort of um, an average between it. So if there are 10 events and three were positive and three were negative or whatever else, then, um, or, or seven were negative or whatever else, then we'd have, we'd be able to have a, a gauge of what is, what requires the most action. So um, I, I started that on a second page on the data studio, but I don't know data studio enough to, to, to get around it. It's a, it's a whole new sort of wizard ball game. Um, so I will, I'll think I'll pick that up and uh, see if I can integrate that because then we could just have a link or some kind of high level uh, overview and see like these are the, the top level um, uh, piece of content that we need to pay attention to. Um, that will give us some uh, better, month on month sort of progress then because we can then roll over a whole period of time and we can see this sentiment on a piece of content over a longer period of time so if, if that sentiment changes when we, um, as we've improved it then we can obviously see if um yeah we're going in the right direction um and um molly to answer your question about actually questions why i have no answer in the forums um i, I get a little bit concerned about the interplay between, I mean, I, I think that as a docs team, we absolutely have a responsibility to keep an eye on the forums. Um, I'm a little bit worried about that, which is really sort of a community management sort of issue, um, finding its way into our issue queue in a way that is, you know, I, I, I don't want to promise something that I'm not completely sure that we can deliver on. Um, and, you know, that, that does really feel like more of a community management issue in, in absence of an official community manager so far, I mean, maybe we should have a separate separate discussion about this um, in you know, sort of in another channel. Um, but I just want to make sure that we're not committing ourselves. You know, at this point, I can say no that we're keeping an eye on the forums. Um, I also just don't want to overcommit ourselves in in a in a stupidly crazy quarter to to you know, actually being the sort of de facto community moderators in that sense. Um, Eric, sorry. Hmm. Back to the helpful, not helpful. 
content voting. Um, just a broad blanket statement um, of encouragement is that you know we get a lot more we do get a lot more votes um, thumbs up votes for content than thumbs down. It's it's uh, it, they're really it's it's just a smattering of thumbs down, um, and you know it's actually a smattering of votes period because people generally don't you know how often do do you click on those kinds of things um but you know given that people are tend to not click on those you know, interact with those kinds of features you know i think that that uh that means that if they do go out of their way to click then then i think we can maybe infer that they found this really helpful you know <laughs> they found this really unhelpful and they and they really want us to focus on it yeah the politics of the politics of feedback are, are really interesting um and and you have a really you have a really good point eric i mean it's funny you know the the, the hot or not button is never going to do a really good job of capturing like yeah i guess this is okay um and that's something that we do need to keep in mind but um but no thanks thanks for calling us out on like not explicitly talking through that for a few weeks just because we got real busy <laughs> And since we've launched it, it does look like it's seventy-eight percent positive overall, as you're mentioning. So. That's pretty awesome, considering considering the amount of stuff that we know that we're trying to yeah. solve. You know, if if in our current state we're still getting that good of feedback, you know, not to not to get too big of a halo, but that's that's encouraging. Yes, yeah, so we just need some more context around the, the negatives, and so we can take more action to it. That's that's the next step. But yeah. it's definitely useful. And we did just um, the the better GitHub issue templating stuff. Um, I think I pushed that on Thursday, so that's like super brand new. Um, you know, I think it'll take us a couple of weeks to see if anybody actually you see how people respond to that. Um, we also moved the open a GitHub issue link up out of the footer, so it's a lot more prominent. So I'm hoping that we're going to see better uptake on that. Um, we'll see how that goes as well. But the target is 99, no less. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Um, is there anything else that we left out or that we want to discuss in our remaining five minutes? I must have talked way too fast. Sorry about that. Yeah. I know that um, OKRs are like, or OKRs and, and the way that we formatted meeting notes are super similar, but I think we are, of course. We're still a little bit away away from mid quarter, but like it's a really short quarter. So just encourage people to like take a peek back early um, to make sure that that everything is as as aligned as um, you expect it to be. I think you guys are well on track, but I'm going to make this recommendation in all meetings this week. So no, sure. Yeah. And this is this is an interesting one because I think with just how we've lined up our OKRs, I think we're acknowledging that like the vast majority of our percentage progress on every single one of these issues is going to come right at the end. So, um, you know, I'm sort of, I'm sort of anticipating the feeling of like not feeling all that great about our numbers mid quarter, but realizing that it's just with how the, how the work itself is laid out, we're going to be kind of sliding into that. And I think it's worth noting that we're also like very uh, optimistic with things we've projected in this quarter. So it's like the, some of the, some of the individual uh, components could be extended or roll over directly straight into next next quarter. And this is, I mean, yeah, no, no. And you, you make a really good point because we've thrown like 80 bazillion things inside of the OKR for, um, and actually I can stop sharing my screen so we can actually see each other's faces. Um, I mean, we've thrown like 80 bazillion things in the launch, the beta site, Epic, um, keeping in mind that our, <laughs> <laughs> that our OKR was actually launch a beta site with one-to-one -one content parity. That said, we should achieve that maybe like middle of next week. Um, you know, and, and that's our, that's our biggest thing. I think the one thing that I'm feeling, you know, like the, the one thing that, that was optimistic was the ecosystem on it. That's a P2. That's something that we really wanted to do, but kept in mind that like, <laughs> bearing it being a super short quarter you know we threw that in there as sort of a stretch goal if if we don't get to do that we don't get to do that but but yeah i mean strictly speaking we'll have launched our beta site in like the middle of next week but you know obviously we want to we do better than that but um but i think i think we're we're well on track i just i just don't want us to have you know like sticker shock at mid-quarter where we're like what the hell why are we like 30 percent done with some other things 
I think basically what I was actually trying to say was that we've already planned our Q1, so uh, we're ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, but, but you're seriously, like, seriously, you're right. I mean, I sort of feel like everything from the Venus Eye launch that we don't get done you know, outside of the bare bones fulfillment of the OKR, you know, we'll have that, we'll have content prioritization, which is in itself an OKR. Yeah. Um, we'll also have feature prioritization. So, so we are actually, we will be writing our Q1 goals as this quarter goes along, which is, which is pretty great. I think it's so possible. If we get the engagement we're hoping for, then we'll we'll have some data to mix in with helping with that prioritization, which is going to really help us be more product and user focused. So, um, yeah. yeah, and I think that having uh, the website, even one-to-one -one content, just mapped over into this new structure, new environment, that, uh, and to just do that, and then sit back, and you know, and see how people react to it, and see how we react to it as we play with it. That's gonna really, that's when when we really, I think, are gonna start to find areas of like, oh, we need to, and and it's gonna be much more content focused, you know, yeah. like actually improving the docs market we need we need internationalization so it's like who who's going to start the translation um yeah. game yeah. off so well right and i mean and that sort of backs into a bunch of issues like do we do we hire translation for our top three languages you know do we want to invest the money in that since you know, that that's a discussion for another time but you know that's a that's that's one of those perfect things for outsourcing i say having spent an hour shoveling a foot of snow this morning, realizing that is additionally something perfect for outsourcing. People have better tools, or better at this than I am, and I can pay them to do it. Um, you know, that's sort of the logic for- Consider for, that your gym. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I'm not gonna have to, I'm not gonna have to re-up my gym membership if winter continues this way. Um, God, what was I gonna say? Um, uh, the only other caution that I wanna have you, and Eric, you bring up a good point about like, Porting the dogs, content parity, letting it sit. We, we do have to be conscious of the fact that our initial set of metrics are going to be the result I mean, on the beta site are gonna be the result of a site that's still very much in flux. So we may want to give some thought as to like formally declaring like a metrics baseline. You know, I don't wanna say let's do, you know, if, if we were dealing with much heavier site traffic and we could say, all right, let's not change anything for two weeks and get baseline numbers, you know, that would be one thing, but I just, you know, with the site traffic that we're seeing, it wouldn't be two weeks, it would be a month, and I'm not gonna stall progress for a month just to get those baseline numbers. But that's another discussion we should probably keep in the back of our minds. Cool, cool. Now we're out of time. All right, ladies and gents, thank you so much. I shall upload this uh, meeting to the YouTubes and I shall see you all next week, if not sooner. Enjoy your Monday. <laughs>